You all alone now. Last man. You are Lone Ranger. Yes, Tano. I am a Lone Ranger. This American Western character invoked by President Donald Trump this week. After long resisting calls to wear a face mask in public, Trump now says he would wear one in certain situations, adding it makes him look like the Lone Ranger. On Thursday, he backed efforts by governors and local officials to get people back to the basics when it comes to containing the virus. That includes face covering, social distancing, testing, and personal hygiene. Wash your hands. Earlier this month, Trump said some Americans wear masks to signal disapproval of him. Trump has not mandated people to wear face coverings, but his comment this week may reflect a small shift in tone. One of the things I think we can expect from uh, the president is that he will do what he often uh, attempts to do rhetorically, which is uh, play both sides just enough to give himself some uh, wiggle room. Uh, I'm not sure, though, with the staying power of the narrative of the pandemic, if that is going to work in this particular instance. The U.S. reported more than 52,000 new coronavirus cases on Wednesday, the largest single-day total since the start of the pandemic. With an 80% increase of new cases in the past two weeks, more Republican lawmakers have joined Democrats in urging Americans to wear masks. It's the single most important thing you can do, not only to protect yourself, but protect others until we get a vaccine. Put on the mask. It's not complicated. Unlike in some countries where masks are simply a health issue, Americans are politically divided. According to the latest Pew Research, 76% of Democrats say they wear a mask in public compared to 53% of Republicans. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden blames the president for this divide. The president gives no direction and he pits us against one another. We can't continue like this. Half recovering and half getting worse. We can't continue. Half wearing masks and half rejecting science. Vice President Mike Pence has recently started wearing masks in public and encouraging their use. And White House officials continue to insist that Americans follow their local directives and make the best decision for their safety. Patsy Widakuswara, VA News, Washington. This is AP News Minute. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer say President Trump needs to focus on reading intelligence briefings. Top Democrats and Republicans were briefed on reports that Russia paid militants in Afghanistan to attack U.S. forces. The White House says the president wasn't briefed earlier because the intelligence wasn't verified. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has ordered that masks be worn in public across most of the state. Texas is dealing with dramatically rising numbers of coronavirus cases and patients going to hospitals. At least 80 students living in fraternity houses near the University of Washington in Seattle report testing positive for COVID-19. The university says hundreds of students have been tested and many results are pending. And New Jersey's casinos have reopened, along with amusement rides and water parks. Governor Phil Murphy reminded visitors and residents to stick with coronavirus restrictions. Mike Hemp in the Associated Press, AP News Minute. You're watching BBC World News with me, David Eads. The headlines. The UK government has announced it will remove quarantine restrictions for travellers to England if they're coming from lower risk countries. Initially, the rules will apply to people travelling from Germany, France, Spain and Italy, but a list of more than 50 countries is due to be published later. US prosecutors have charged the British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell with grooming young girls for her former boyfriend, the convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Maxwell has previously denied any wrongdoing. Texas is making the wearing of a face mask compulsory in public across much of the state as COVID-19 infections continue to soar. Across the US, a record 55,000 people have tested positive for the last 24-hour period. There's been an explosion and fire at Iran's main nuclear fuel production site. Authorities in Tehran say they're still investigating. Ghislaine Maxwell's home sits at the end of a narrow, half-mile dirt driveway. It's lined with no trespassing signs and barred by a padlocked metal fence. 
A stone stands near the gate with the words tucked away. On Tuesday, Maxwell was arrested on charges she lured girls as young as 14 years old for the late and disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein to sexually abuse. Maxwell had been hiding out in style since December. A listing of her Massachusetts home said it had cathedral ceilings, a floor-to-ceiling fieldstone fireplace, and a wall of glass overlooking the 156-acre property. After her arrest, the FBI scorned her choice of getaway spot, a home that officials say she purchased for $1 million in cash. We learned she had slithered away to a gorgeous property in New Hampshire, continuing to live a life of privilege while her victims live with the trauma inflicted upon them years ago. We moved when we were ready, and Ms. Maxwell was arrested without incident. Like Epstein, Ms. Maxwell chose to blatantly disregard the law and her responsibility as an adult, using whatever means she had at her disposal to lure vulnerable youth into behavior they should never have been exposed and which creates lasting harm. Maxwell's home seems to have been secluded enough to keep her out of sight in Bradford, a small town of less than 2,000 people. Locals told Reuters they had no idea Maxwell was holed up nearby, and some said they had never seen her in town. Maxwell's arrest is the latest twist in Epstein's saga. He went from a former math teacher to high-flying investor and was found hanged in a New York City jail last August in an apparent suicide while awaiting trial on federal charges of trafficking. Prosecutors on Thursday called Maxwell, who was Epstein's ex-girlfriend, one of his closest associates.